finally some change because it looks like that Ukrainians decided to completely reverse its strategy and also there is a massive push across the entire Kherson front line. At the same time, it is estimated that the preparations for the ultimate liberation of the rest of Kherson region is approximately 70% complete and Ukrainians are truly making a history in Bakhmut. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russkaya propaganda. So, today we have yet another video of very questionable things which are next to the living houses of regular Russians. And basically here is the picture of it. Well, it looks uh, very scary, not gonna lie. Especially if you see those heads in the middle of the night. But my question to you guys is, what do you think is it? Is it maybe decorations? Maybe these are the soul catchers? Maybe this is something as innocent as just, I don't know, bird houses? Or maybe this is uh, some hidden totems? Uh, let me know in the comments, what do you think? You have like 5 to 10 seconds. And well, to the surprise of many, uh, the correct answer is these heads are simply uh, bird houses. I do not see any birds flying inside them, but this is what they are. And those of you who guessed it correctly, you are more than welcome, pretty much as everyone else, into the Russian youth community. All you need to do for this is to simply like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram to see how I live outside of YouTube. The link is down below. But okay, now let's get serious and talk about Ukrainians who decide to switch and change its military tactics. Then we go to the east of the country, where there's intense fighting for every single meter around Bakhmut. And we'll finalize everything in the south, where Ukrainians started to push across the entire Kherson front line. And so yes, approximately last week, the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, he did mention that Ukraine is considering switching its tactics completely, which will include developing new military strategy, tactics, also doing some quick ambushes, backstabs and sudden attacks. And also this does not mean only changing everything that's going on on the battlefield. It also involves changing things behind the scenes. And of course, whenever the president says about we are considering to change the tactics, it is already happening. It is just obviously that the regular us guys, a regular public does not know the exact things yet for obvious reasons. But potentially Ukrainians, they did give us a hint. Also approximately several days ago, they mentioned that Ukraine is now inviting the producers, manufacturers of the Western weapons, specifically air defense systems, to open their factories and construct this equipment in joint mutual cooperation with Ukrainians. So basically, as you can see, instead of solely relying on the supplying of those machines from the West, Ukrainians along with their Western partners will be building them on their own territory, obviously as far from the front lines as possible. And first of all, this will significantly reduce the costs and the time for this equipment to be delivered. Basically, logistics, they'll be almost immediately available to Ukrainians. And as soon as Ukrainians will have enough air defense systems, their cities, town, villages and even frontline positions will be much more covered. Then they will also have much more offensive equipment to perform the advancement and pushes. And so, as you can see, the combination of those will allow exactly what President Zelensky was talking about to do such sudden attacks ambushes and unexpected regrouping raids. And you get the idea basically, right? And just so you have a better understanding, right here is the map of Ukraine with all the existing and promised air defense systems, in addition to potential the ones which Ukraine might have in the future. And as you can see, majority of the territory of this country will be covered by the air defense. But unfortunately, Russians do not just sit and do 
nothing. They also established some new relationships and friendships, such as, for example, one of the most recent ones with the North Korea. And also they discover, uh, they reopen or they reuse their old military equipment, the one which was even potentially being in the museum for decades, and they start reusing them on the battlefield. That is why, unfortunately, in the begin since the beginning of this year, approximately on average every single month, Russians were bringing five to six times more military vehicles and armor equipment to the front lines in comparison to Ukrainians, even taking into consideration the support of the West. So, as you can see, to say the least, even though Ukrainians, yes, they do receive the support from the West and they're extremely grateful for it, but it is far behind the number of similar equipment that Russians bring once again every single month. In addition to that, according to the defense intelligence of Ukraine, Russians reduced their attacks recently because they are stockpiling the munition missiles and drones for the future massive attacks against once again the energy infrastructure of Ukraine this winter. And the very last thing Russians are waiting for this last trigger, according to the Ministry of Energy of Ukraine, is below zero or freezing temperatures. And this is potentially when Russians will start attacking. And so as you can see, right now it is as important as ever for Ukrainians to get the support from the West as soon as possible, because winter is literally only a couple of weeks away. And some countries, such, such as for example Germany, they recently increased the support to Ukraine, sending even more Abrams tanks, all-terrain vehicles, trucks and ammunition. And so yes, now as promised, let's quickly talk about the situation in the East, where there is intense fighting for every single meter in Bakhmut, before finally switching our attention to the south of the country. But first of all, let's make a quick stop if in, Tabo, in Tambov, a region located on the territory of Russia, where this past night local residents reported some very loud noises coming from the gunpowder factory. And as you can see, this is the video from the location. According to Russians, they were able to successfully intercept a Ukrainian drone without any damage to the factory. But to be honest, looking at the video, it kind of looks like that the situation is not that truthful, according to what Russian says. And so yes, now let's get back to the east of the country. And first of all, as always, we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians continue their offensive along Kupiansk, Svatovy, Kremlinov front line, and even reportedly they were able to make a very minimal gains next to the to the southwest of Persia Travnia, as you can see from this map. But at the same time, Ukrainians reportedly were able to intercept a Russian fighter jet when it fell in the forest area next to Liman Pershi. Going along the eastern front lines, we can see that a lot of Russian soldiers having a pretty strong herd instinct, they all of them followed, their commander I'm assuming, into one single house. And this action was spotted by a Ukrainian drone. Later there was an attack and the house was uh, destroyed. And yet another video, most likely from the eastern front lines, is when Russians trying to escape a Ukrainian drone in this, uh, we call it Buhanka, uh, minivan, so-called minivan. And so basically uh, the driver is doing everything possible to maneuver to avoid colliding with the drone, and just when the drone starts to approach for the second time, one of Russian soldiers for some reason decide to literally open the door, inviting the drone right inside. This is exactly what happened. And then, if you remember, for the last several days Russians resumed their offensive around Bakhmut area, and so we do have one of the most recent videos from Klishivka, where Russians decide to attack Ukrainian positions, which turned out to be a complete failure, disaster. Russians were not able to do anything, Ukrainians repelled this attack relatively easily, eliminating majority of the advancing forces. And as you can see guys, today is yet another video where I do have a lot of combat footage and in order for me to comply with the YouTube guidelines I have to censor it. But if you do want to see fully uncensored episode of the Russian Dude and also support the channel starting only as little as $4 per month, you can go ahead and check those episodes on my Patreon. The link is down below. There is one week of free access for you to see if you like it or not. Thank you 
so much. And so yes, back to Bakhmut area. If you remember, yesterday Russians were able to advance to the southwest of Yahidnya and capture a relatively significant territory. But today Ukrainians were already to fight back and recapture some land back, as you can see from this map. It is not that much, but every single meter counts. At this point there is intense fighting around the city is happening pretty much daily and both sides capture and lose territories also pretty much every single day. But just taking into consideration for how long Ukrainians were able to resist this Russian Bakhmut offensive, who do have much larger force, to say the least, Ukrainians are truly making a history in this city. And now just a couple of last things from the East before we switch our attention to very important events in the South. And so first of all right here is the video from Avdiivka area in one of the very first days of the Russian offensive against this city. And Russians created a, some kind of an abomination. They installed an electronic warfare equipment on top of the infantry fighting vehicle. And it was not that maneuverable, it did lose a lot of its characteristics. It was not raider and not armored vehicle at the same time, but this is what they did. And Ukrainians discovered it and destroyed it with a simple drone. And speaking about Avdiivka, Russians have been launching attacks for more than a month at this point, turning this city pretty much to the ground, destroying this city pretty much to the ground. Just like pretty much exactly the same thing which happened in Marinka previously, after war, both of these cities will have to be rebuilt completely from scratch. And just believe it or not, Russians attacked yet another civilian infrastructure in Selidova, located in Donetsk region. And this is, I mean, this is usually what they do whenever Ukrainians are succeeding along the front lines. I mean, just think about it. Ukrainians are winning the actual war on the battlefield, and Russians respond by threatening and destroying civilians. How much sense does it make for a country which claims to be the liberator? And now it is time to talk about some major events which are happening right now in the south, where Ukrainians reportedly are advancing across the entire Kherson frontline. And right before we do it, if you don't mind guys, once again, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. Thank you so much. And to begin with, Ukrainians were able to destroy a very big military base of Russians located in Brilivka. Reportedly HIMARS was used in this attack, and as you can see it is located 36 kilometers behind the front lines. Pretty much confirming the statements I was making in my previous video, that Ukrainians are trying to destroy the logistics and far behind the front line military bases of Russians before the upcoming winter. Next, we once again refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Ukrainians continue to cross Dnieper River and expand their success on the other side of Kherson. Specifically, there is even more reportedly Ukrainian soldiers in Krynki trying to advance to the south in this forest area. And then, unfortunately, long forgotten front line in Zaporozhye region, Ukrainians also, looks like, resume their counteroffensive in the Verbove direction. But most importantly, according to the head of the office of the president of Ukraine, Andriy Yermak, Ukrainians did fully and finally established a very strong bridgehead across Dnipro river and the preparations for the next stage of the Kherson liberation is done at approximately 70%. And you know why it is so important? Because this is one of the very first confirmations of a cross Dnipro liberation, which has been made by such a high Ukrainian government authority. He is also mentioning that Kherson region will not be the very last stage of the southern counteroffensive by Ukrainians. They are also targeting to demilitarize and liberate Crimea as well. Obviously, not right away, but in the near future. 100% this is going to happen, he said. And then is 
another extremely important statement from already familiar Natalia Khomenyuk, who is mentioning that Ukrainians initiated the push against pretty much the entire Kherson front line across the Dnipro river and are able to recapture Russian positions on the other side, ranging between 3 to 8 kilometers. Obviously, way more land was recaptured by Ukrainians in Oleshki area and just a little bit, but still some advancements were made to the west of Novokakhovka. For obvious reasons, she is asking for the operational silence, pretty much to let Ukrainian soldiers do their work, and then whenever there are results, this is when we will all be able to discuss them. But once again, she did acknowledge that Ukrainians started pushing across pretty much the entire Kherson frontline, and this is a very big news. And you know what? Even Russian media, as you can see from this article, started to acknowledge that yes, Ukrainian forces, they did cross the Dnipro river. And we already know, whenever Russians themselves acknowledge this, it means the situation is nearly catastrophic for them. And by the way, here is a very interesting thing. You can see how different media write those articles. For example, the center media says that Russia admits Ukrainian troops on occupied bank of Dnipro river. The left media says Ukrainian troops pressuring Putin's forces along Dnipro river. And as we go all the way down and refer to the right-sided media, we can read that Russia says Ukrainian forces have crossed river Dnipro, but face hellfire and death. And this possibility for me to compare articles from different media sources is by far my favorite feature of the ground news. And speaking of, the Black Friday promotion with the 40% off for the unlimited access of Ground News is still active, so please go ahead and use my link down below ground.news forward slash Russian dude to claim this amazing offer. And well, there you have it. Let me know guys in the comments whether do you think Ukrainians will be able to achieve a pretty big success by the end of this year. I will be curious to see what you guys think honestly. Also, thank you Patreons so much for your support and see you tomorrow.